I want to create a society that is more equitable, where there are more, where there is the commerce exists, that there are liberal ideas presented and there are conservative ideas that are presented in Hollywood and in academia and the mainstream media and let the consumer choose. We're here with Andrew Breitbart of the brand new book, Righteous Indignation, and telling you it, it reads like Andrew's personality, which is uh, uh, electrifying to be around. So I definitely encourage you to go ahead and, and pick up the book. Now let me ask you this, and Andrew, I've know, known you a long time and, and know your story, but you went from college stoner to... Did you, what, did you say stoner? Yeah. I wasn't okay, a stoner. Okay, not a stoner. Okay, not I college, was not a stoner. Not a stoner. You, you're... I was a slacker. Slacker. Alcohol, slacker. Uh, alcohol was certainly a part of my daily uh, behavior. Um, my epiphany, my coming of age of recognizing that I was actually a conservative and not the factory setting liberal that I was, you know, created to be. I mean, look, I'm from West Los Angeles, Hollywood, Brentwood, where everyone basically is a liberal, at least only people openly admit they're liberal. So I uh, did what I did and I was just like everybody else but I had a series of epiphanies like I mean it's a cliche I mean how many people have you know heard conservative talk radio and said that's me I've been hanitized you you know Rush Limbaugh to a great extent was influential once I realized that I was being lied to by the mainstream media once I found out that education in K through 12 and education through academia was intentionally depriving people from the conservative point of view, which is to me the righteous point of view, the one that comports with human nature, not the one that exists in a frustrating, uh, you know, uh, Algernon-like labyrinth of hell trying to find a utopia that doesn't exist, that fails every single time. Once I found uh, that conservatism is just like water, it just is, um, and that my future children are not going to be uh, given that in K through 12, and my future children are going to be given uh, goofy utopia through Katie Couric's lips. I said, I'm going to take this this on, and I, I, I'm the ex-smoker. I'm, I'm angry at people who are smoking, but my smoking is uh, default liberalism. I want to create a society that is more equitable, where there are more, where there is the commerce exists, that there are liberal ideas presented and there are conservative ideas that are presented in Hollywood and in academia and the mainstream media and let the consumer choose. There isn't a choice uh, as much as there should be. Well, now. what was that turning point where, you know, you were like most young people just heard liberal ideas your, your entire life, you thought that was the natural uh, flow of events. What was that turning point where you say, you know what, I actually I want no part of liberalism. I don't know how many fingers I'm going to use, but I'm going to use the finger thing. My dad. I dedicate the book to my dad, to two people. My dad, uh, he saved me. He said when I graduated from college, which my family paid for, um, and they gave me I think like a $250 stipend per month, okay, to waste on beer. My dad said, you're off you're off the, the gravy train. And I had to start buying my own shoes and paying my own rent. I believe once I put those shoes on and I started walking towards uh, uh, self-sufficiency and independence that I was already walking towards conservatism, but I didn't know it. Second person I dedicated the, the book to, Clarence Thomas. Um, I watched that hearing, wanting to watch him be taken down by what I call the Democrat, now call the Democrat media complex, the natural alliance of the Democratic Party, uh, liberal interest groups, and the mainstream media. I wanted to watch him go down because the media told me he was a bad man. By watching the evidence for an entire week, I recognized there was something wrong. There was something wrong with the media. That, that created the narrative that he was a bad man. There was something wrong with Ted Kennedy, the Ted Kennedy sitting in judgment of this man, grilling this historic, uh, uh, why, uh, this, this historic Supreme Court pick. And why was the NAACP, why did they have their, why were they sitting on their hands while this black man was being pilloried for nothing? Three, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh. 
because of my disdain for grunge rock, which was the, the big thing in 1992, it took all of my alternative British music, like Depeche Mode, The Cure, The Smiths, The The, New Order, it took all of that music off of my favorite radio stations, and then I, I had Alice in Chains, <laughs> uh, Mud Honey, <laughs> uh, Pearl Jam, Eddie Vedder, Nirvana. It, was, it just wasn't me. And so I'm driving around LA wondering about the Bill Clinton thing. Like, this doesn't make sense. And the Clarence Thomas thing. I don't even like the music. And I switched to the AM dial reluctantly because there was nothing to listen to as I was delivering scripts for a producer. And I started to listen to this man that I was, I believe to the core of my being was evil because I was still in factory default setting and I hadn't flipped the switch yet and actually listened to the guy. I believed he was evil. I believed he was racist to the core of my being, even though I had never listened to him. Uh, over the course of the 1992 election, which included George Herbert Walker Bush, Ross Perot, and Bill Clinton, uh, I got a, quite an education. And uh, I would say that I was well on the road towards conservatism at that point, and I've only gotten more so with every year.